My name's William Crow. I'm a pilot in the U.S. Navy. My dad used to be a pilot in the United States Air Force, so growing up we moved around a lot. New towns, new schools, new friends. Dad used to take my kid brother Charlie and me to the airbase at whatever town we lived in at the time. Every year there'd be new planes, new models. Every year they were faster and stronger, each one better than the one before. Then there was the accident. Some pilot screwed his landing and crashed. Dad was working in the hangar. He ran out and pulled the pilot from the burning plane right before it went up. Dad was badly burned. He was lucky to be alive, but he couldn't fly anymore. He got a discharge and a pension. Well, the pension was never enough, and pretty soon we found ourselves farming a patch of dirt just to get by. Out there, the only things we had plenty of were dirt and sky. Our only entertainment was a busted old crop duster, so Charlie and I became the Dirt Duster Brothers. We flew the wings off that old crate. As much fun as that was, it couldn't last forever. The Navy was our way out. When we got old enough, we joined up. I graduated from flight training at Pensacola. Charlie trained as a sailor. Before long, we got our postings. I was stationed at Hickam Field, Pearl Harbor. Charlie was on the USS Arizona, a great name for a great battleship, the pride of the fleet. We've been caught off guard by a Japanese surprise attack. You must take off at once to avoid being destroyed on the ground by their attack planes. Once airborne, you must defend the planes still on the ground and our vital fueling facilities. If you fail, our fleet will be severely hampered in their ability to strike back after this vicious attack. It seems the war has finally begun, Lieutenant Crow. Pearl Harbor was hell. One minute I was thinking about getting out of bed, the next minute the sky's so thick with planes I could barely see the sun.
to us and make them pay. You don't sucker punch the United States and get away with it. Dear Mom and Dad, there's no easy way to tell you this. Charlie's dead. I wanted you to hear it from me before the man from the Navy arrives, but I'm not sure this letter will beat their telegraph. Charlie was on the USS Arizona, which was moored on Battleship Row. The Japs knew what they were after. They hit the ships while our boys were still in their bunks. The Arizona went down during the attack. As she sank, we could hear the boys trapped inside screaming for our help but we couldn't get them out. I'm sorry I can't write more, but as of this morning, we're at war. I'm shipping out for Wake Island in a couple of hours. I swear this to you now, those Japs are gonna pay for what they did to our family and our country. William Crow. The attack on Pearl Harbor pulled us into the war. In just a couple of hours, hundreds of Jap pilots hit our fleet hard, decimating our battleships. Thankfully, our carriers were at sea during the attack. This was quite a piece of good luck. But their attack on Pearl was just the beginning. The Japs hit all over the Pacific, from Malaya to the Dutch East Indies. They did a lot of damage, but they also stirred up a hornet's nest. We were mad, and our rage was directed one way, west to Japan. When we entered the war, we thought we'd get it over quick. We'd be home by Christmas telling stories about how we kicked the Japs' ass. Man, we were so wrong. Hitting Pearl Harbor wasn't enough for them. They wanted Wake Island, too. Now, Wake's just an airfield on a speck of sand in the middle of the Pacific, but they wanted it bad. Welcome to Wake Island. You have been sent here to reinforce our badly undermanned fighter squadron. We've been holding down our own, but Jap bombing in the last two days has severely depleted our squadron and resources. We're now down to just four Wildcats. A group of Japanese Pete Scout planes have just flown over the HQ. Luckily, these planes don't have radios. Shoot them down before they can reach the safety of their fleet and hand over the recon photos of our locations. After Pearl, the Japs headed for our base at Wake Island. If we lost Wake, then the rest of our bases would be within their reach. They weren't going to get it without one hell of a fight. Scramble, scramble, enemy recon planes must be intercepted. 
it before they reveal our position to their fleet. Over. Roger that, weight control. We'll splash those nosy SOBs for you. We're rolling. Out. Be advised. Enemy aircraft confirmed as Mitsubishi F-1M beats seaplanes. Over. Don't underestimate them. That rear gun has taken on a lot of overconfident rookies. Fine by me. Well done, man. We've held them all for another day. Everyone return to base and get some rest. They'll be back.
the Japanese have been bombing us like clockwork. Always at 11, and always from the south. Today we were going to head out to meet them. But we just spotted two landing groups heading in from the west and the east. Yesterday's bombing has left us desperately under-resourced. So you and your wing will need to help on both fronts. Your wing, Baker Wing, must deal with the landings heading for the western shore. Able Wing will deal with the eastern landing. Deal with them quickly, because there's a bombing raid coming at 1100.
First wave taken care of. The relentless bombardment has knocked out the majority of our defenses and aircraft. We cannot hold out much longer, so we've begun evacuation procedures. The Japanese are sending yet another wave of landing craft along with assault troops to overrun the island. You must intercept the boats before they reach the shore. You must hold off the Japanese long enough to give us time to evacuate key personnel. A senior admiral is here on wake, and it is vital that he does not fall into enemy hands. Once he boards his Catalina, you are to escort him to the Enterprise.
Charlie 2. You're clear for takeoff. Proceed to the northwest and attack all enemy units engaged in the amphibious assault. Your orders are to protect the seaplane base at all costs. Be advised, enemy troops have landed in several locations and we're taking heavy fire from naval units stationed in the- Hell! They took out the tower! I've gotta get off the ground or I'm done for! Wake Charlie 2, this is Sergeant North with the Marine platoon guarding the seaplane base. We spotted landing craft headed our way and could use some support. Over.
Charlie Wing, this is the Catalina pilot. Keep him off our back while I get the engine started and warmed up. Uh-oh, we've got incoming valves. Take him out, pilot! Come on, you piece of junk! Start, damn it! Move at your overgrown tin can, get your metal fanny out of here, and I'll get you a full overhaul when we get back to Oahu!
tough pilot we can get. I think this is going to be a long war. Somehow I managed to get the Admiral back to the Enterprise in one piece. His cat was so full of holes it just about sank right after they landed. Later we got to talking. He was mighty grateful. He even said I'd done a fine job, which was a big compliment from an old hard ass. He told me he was transferring to another carrier, the Lexington, and he wanted me to come with him. We were lucky to have any carriers at all. If they were at Pearl like they were supposed to be, we'd be out of the war already. Before I knew it, I was on board the Lady Lex with a whole new crew. We were on our way to the Marshall Islands. My new squadron leader was a guy named Callahan. The Admiral had put in a good word for me, and I was even assigned my own wing. After two weeks of clockwork bombing raids and landings, the Japs took wake. Our servicemen fought long and hard. Even the civvies pitched in. I guess they were all hoping that the Enterprise would show up to help. In the end, though, the Japs prevailed, and the commander of Wake surrendered on the 23rd of December. Those Marines on Wake Island were outnumbered, but never outfought. 